At the start of the movie, we meet a police officer named Helen. She is taking a young boy, Mahdi, to court as a witness. Mahdi is nervous because he has to testify against a dangerous gangster named Haley. To help calm him, Haley tells Mahdi, Don't worry, I'm responsible for your protection. You're prepared for this, and I'm right here with you. As they approach the courthouse, we see that many young men nearby belong to a gang called the Baiku Gang. Just as Mahdi is about to enter the courtroom, someone distracts the guards. At that moment, a member of the Baiku Gang rushes in and knocks Mahdi down. Despite the tight security around Haley, the guards can't do anything to stop it. This attacker is named Zaid, and his actions create chaos, putting Mahdi's safety in serious jeopardy. Zaid is serving a life sentence for three murders. Before his time in prison, he was a doctor and had an innocent demeanor. He has a unique ability to sense danger before it happens, which once allowed him to save a young black boy. He tells the boy to avoid fights because his mother is waiting for him at home. Zaid has a wife and child, but now his wife has remarried. He longs to see his son, but he knows he may never leave prison. One day, a police officer informs Zaid that someone is there to see him. It's Haley, a gangster, who shows Zaid a photo of a young gangster named Mutter. Haley tells Zaid that there are special people in prison, and she wants him to build relationships with them. Zaid politely declines, saying he has no interest in their world. Haley insists that she knows he used to have a good life as a doctor and that he can regain it if he helps her. Zaid walks away without giving her an answer. That night, a guard comes to escort Zaid to the gang department. The guard informs him that he will be staying there from now on. In this new place, Zaid faces harassment from a group of tough inmates who steal his jacket. The next day, Zaid tries to call his wife to speak with his son, but she doesn't let their child talk to him, leaving Zaid feeling emotional. Later, Haley returns to see Zaid and shows him his release papers. She understands that he wants to get out of jail, so Zaid agrees to do her bidding. She explains that there is a gangster named Otto who runs the gang department, and if Zaid builds a good relationship with him, he can help Zaid reach Mutter. To prove himself, Zaid confronts the three boys who stole his jacket and beats them up to get it back. This act catches Otto's attention. The next day, Otto summons Zaid and confronts him about the fight. He makes Zaid smoke a cigarette, telling him he has until the cigarette burns out to explain why he should be allowed to live. Zaid tells Otto that while he can only move within a limited part of the prison, he has connections with all the guards and can get any item needed. Impressed, Otto then gives Zaid a task, he orders him to go to cell number 157 in department F and beat up a boy he had saved a few days earlier, ensuring that the boy's face is unrecognizable. That night, Zaid heads to the cell of the boy he was ordered to beat up. Although he doesn't want to hurt anyone, he knows he has to do this to earn his freedom. He goes in and assaults the boy, trying to follow through with his task, even though it goes against his nature. After a few days, Haley gets Zaid released from jail. Once outside, he returns to his old apartment, where he bumps into D.D., a familiar face from his past life. Zaid goes home to clean himself up before visiting his wife. When he asks about their son, she coldly tells him that if he wants to see their son, he'll have to do it from a distance. That night, Zaid receives a call from Jimmy, a member of Otto's gang, who asks him to meet downstairs. A car pulls up, and Zaid gets in. Jimmy, pointing a gun at him, questions why a doctor would want to join their gang. He warns Zaid that he'll examine him closely, and if he finds anything suspicious, Zaid won't survive. After the threatening encounter, Jimmy tosses Zaid out of the car. The next day, Zaid meets Haley at a museum. She gives him a GPS device and a microphone, instructing him to gather as much information about the gang as possible. That night at home, Zaid watches as Mutter and his men gather around a wounded man lying on the floor, who has a bullet in his leg. Jimmy orders Zaid to remove the bullet. Zaid hesitates, saying he hasn't done that kind of work in a long time, and asks everyone to leave the room but Mutter insists they all stay. He tells Zaid that everything he needs is there, and he needs to save his brother's life. Zaid takes a deep breath and removes the bullet from the man's leg, sealing the wound afterward. Once the job is done, Mutter thanks Zaid and pays him for his services. Mutter also suggests that Zaid should return to working in a hospital. Zaid replies that after being convicted of three murders, they wouldn't allow him back. 
Mutter then asks if Zaid has any debts or problems he needs help with. Zaid responds that he has no debts and just wants to be kept in the loop if there's work available. Zaid takes a football and decides to visit his son. His wife allows the meeting, and Zaid notices that her new husband is quite kind. Later that evening, while watching a football match with some boys from his building, Didi calls him over to play. This gives Zaid the chance to bond with everyone in the neighborhood. That night, he secretly attaches a microphone inside his jacket and shoes. He wants to make sure no one finds it, even if they search him. The next day, Zaid goes with Mutter to a restaurant in a mall, where members of the Eagle Gang are also present. Mutter asks Zaid if he's there to make money or to start trouble. Zaid replies that he's there to earn money. Mutter tells him to forget about any past conflicts and focus on his work. On their way back, Mutter's brother questions why Mutter let Zaid go, implying he's scared. Mutter explains that he doesn't want any fights that could bring outside trouble. Later, while chatting at a nearby bar, Didi arrives. Zaid stands up to greet him, and Mutter mentions that he knows they are neighbors and that Didi is like a younger brother to him. Didi is there to collect supplies he distributes to the local kids. Meanwhile, Zaid quietly places a GPS device under Mutter's car. After some time, Jimmy approaches Zaid and tells him that Mutter likes him, though he warns Zaid not to break that trust. Jimmy then sends Zaid off with a member of his gang to pick up some supplies, instructing them to go their separate ways. Zaid managed to attach GPS trackers to the truck carrying the supplies. When the gang members leave with the goods, they get ambushed by members of the Eagle Gang, who beat them up and take the supplies. One of the gang members places a GPS device under their car, allowing Zaid to track their location. Once he knows where they are headed, Zaid goes there alone, telling his men he's come to meet Bilu. When he arrives, Bilu Kalia informs him that he won't be leaving alive. As the gang tries to capture him, Zaid reacts quickly, snatching Bilu's gun and firing at him. He grabs his belongings and forces Bilu outside with him, ready for whatever comes next. Zaid tries to escape the building, leaving Bilu behind, but soon realizes he's trapped as goons approach from both sides. Thinking quickly, he jumps from the building and drops down to the ground below. He manages to grab a bike from a boy nearby and speeds away. When he meets Mutter, he recounts everything that happened, but at first, no one believes him. To prove his story, Zaid hands Mutter Bilu Kalia's gun and challenges him to trace its ownership. This act deepens Mutter's trust in Zaid. On his way home, Zaid encounters DD, who mentions that he had delivered goods to some boys but didn't get paid. Zaid sees DD smoking a drug-laced cigarette and realizes he needs to help him. Considering DD is like a younger brother, he doesn't want him to fall into bad habits. Determined to confront the boys who cheated DD, Zaid goes with him and demands they pay up before he resorts to violence. After that, Zaid visits the policewoman, Haley, and hands her recordings of his activities over the past 15 days. She praises his efforts, but Zaid expresses his desire to break free from this dangerous cycle and find a better path for himself and his son. Haley reassures Zaid, telling him that it will only be a few days until she can help him out of this situation. The next day, Mutter takes Zaid to meet his brother in DD. As they head to their car with the goods, Haley watches from her vehicle. Suddenly, members of the Eagle Gang show up and start shooting. In the chaos, Mutter's brother is killed. Zaid and Dee Dee rush back to the supermarket, but the goons are in hot pursuit. Haley arrives just in time to follow them. Zaid and Dee Dee manage to escape into the basement of the supermarket. In the basement, Zaid tells Dee Dee to run for safety. Just then, Haley appears, and Dee Dee watches them speak anxiously. Meanwhile, Mutter is mourning his brother's death and suggests they take Zaid somewhere else. They take Zaid to a secluded area where he becomes increasingly nervous. They witness a boy being beaten and nearly have boiling water poured into his mouth. The boy pleads for mercy, saying he only revealed information about the delivery because his mother was being held captive. This revelation makes the situation even more tense. Later, Zaid meets with Haley in a library, expressing his frustration and saying he can't continue to work for her after nearly being caught. Haley insists that she has many ways to ensure he continues cooperating and warns him to stay quiet about their arrangement. Back at Mutter's hideout, Dee Dee is threatened, and he is asked about the events that occurred at the supermarket. 
The tension escalates as they all realize the dangerous game they are playing. In a crucial moment of the story, Dee Dee reveals to Haley that a girl has come looking for Zide. He shows her a picture of Haley on his phone, indicating that she might be involved in something dangerous. Meanwhile, Zide is out with his son, enjoying their time together. However, their peaceful outing is abruptly interrupted when Mutter's men attack them. In the chaos, Zide instinctively protects his son, ensuring his safety before rushing to return him to his ex-wife. When Zide arrives at his ex-wife's house, the tension is palpable. She is furious with him for putting their son in danger. In a moment of anger, she slaps Zide and declares that he is never welcome there again. Heartbroken but determined, Zide leaves her home and heads back to his apartment. Upon his arrival, he discovers that someone has ransacked his place. Items are scattered, and it's clear that someone was searching for something, perhaps related to him. Realizing the gravity of his situation, Zide steps outside and informs Haley about everything that has happened. However, just as he begins to explain, a group of men ambushes him. They knock him unconscious and take him to a service station against his will. At the service station, Jimmy, one of Mutter's henchmen, forces Zide to speak with Mutter over the phone. Mutter's voice drips with menace as he threatens Zide, saying, I will kill your family. Zide's heart races as he pleads for his family's safety, offering to accept any punishment Mutter deems fit. Just as he is about to make his case, Jimmy suddenly disconnects the call, leaving Zide in a state of panic and fury. Fueled by anger, Zide strains against the zip ties binding his wrists. With sheer determination, he manages to break free. Once his hands are free, he quickly turns the tables on Jimmy, overpowering him in a fierce struggle. During the scuffle, one of Jimmy's friends accidentally gets shot, escalating the chaos. Zide, who is usually calm and collected, becomes a force of nature when his loved ones are threatened. In a fit of rage, he strangles Jimmy, ensuring he will never pose a threat again. After taking a moment to regain his composure, Zide grabs a car and heads straight to Mutter's hideout. Upon arriving, he confronts Mutter, who is waiting with a gun drawn. Mutter opens fire, and Zide is hit, causing him to fall to the ground. As Mutter stands over him, he accuses Zide of betrayal, convinced that Zide has turned against him. Just then, Dee Dee appears on the scene, brandishing a gun and pointing it directly at Mutter. Mutter dismisses Dee Dee, underestimating him, but Zide sees an opportunity. From his position on the ground, Zide aims and shoots Mutter from behind, catching him off guard. After the chaos, Dee Dee helps Zide escape, urging him to go home and avoid the streets forever. As they part ways, the sound of police sirens echoes in the distance. Zide realizes he must leave quickly to avoid being caught. The film ends on a suspenseful note, revealing that Haley had originally hired Zide to gather evidence against Mutter for prosecution. However, Zide ultimately took matters into his own hands, making decisions that would change the course of his life. If you enjoyed the film, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more engaging recaps.